Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV and what a glorious day. I'm fishing on the River Trent at Clifton in Nottingham and this is a uh, nuts fed water and I'd heard some good reports of matches on this stretch where they've been catching some nice bags of silverfish and given the conditions with this clear water and bright sunshine we thought the best bet was to come and target those silverfish here today. I've been fishing for about a half an hour and I'm fishing with a, a bolo float around about 16 to 20 meters out and I've started off just feeding hemp and casters and so far we've been rewarded with some nice dace and roach so just pleased to be getting some bites and starting to put a weight together. Well, the Trent's a river that I've fished a fair bit in the past and not really so much in recent times, unfortunately, but we've got a Division One National on the Trent and this is going to be one of the sections on the day so it's all on the natural trend it's not on the tidal this time and it's looking to be a really good match this year and um, I know I'm really excited and a lot of my team members are excited about fishing it so we're certainly planning to fish the Trent quite a bit more this year and it's just great to hear the reports of the good bags of silver fish that have been caught because for a while the Trent went through a bit of a doldrum period really where it was big fish or bust and obviously in a national or a big team match that makes the river very very patchy so the fact that we've got some apparently some good silver fish shoals to go at I think it's going to make a really fair and interesting national. Well the peg I've selected today here at Clifton is peg six and um, I met up with one of the committee members, Paul Warwick this morning, and uh, he walked me along the stretch and he felt that this would be a, a reliable area to fish. And um, I mean, it's fair to say that oh, the Trent's a big river and uh, it can be a bit daunting. So obviously good local knowledge like that is always a massive advantage. Um, but you can see that the pegs are around about five or six foot deep and despite the fact it's low, it's got a good pace and it lends itself absolutely perfectly to float fishing like this. One thing that's really obvious since I last came here, which was probably, well, definitely over 20 years ago, was how accessible it is now. Um, you're allowed to park behind your peg and they've built these fantastic platforms. So the fishing's really comfortable certainly more comfortable than it was back in the day when you were wading and standing in the river so you've got to say the the access and facilities here are absolutely bang on. It goes without saying that you could fish a multitude of different methods on a river like the Trent but as I mentioned we know there's a good head of silverfish here and um, I think the best way of just getting some bites and catching the fish is going to be float fishing. Um, I know there's some fantastic bream and barbel pegs along this stretch, but I think you probably need to be fishing for them on a, certainly on an overcast day, not a really bright day like this. And perhaps when there's a bit more water on and the fish would feed more confidently. So just with a view to the national, really, I thought I'd set up two bolo rigs, um, a big one, which is four gram and a lighter one, which is two gram and just take it from there. So you just never know really, you want to try and you know, weigh up the peg, see how it responds and change your style and rigs accordingly. So you, when you're faced with conditions like this on a river, um, 
A barlow float can be a, a great way of fishing. It gives you some control over the float so you can trot the float nicely. And also when there's a lot of small fish about, the nature of the rig is it's very positive. So it's a way of catching smaller fish efficiently and also hopefully getting through to some of the bigger fish that might be feeding. Um, it's fair to say that I'm getting a bite every cast. So there's a lot of fish out there, a lot of small fish out there. So feed wise, I've decided to target hemp and casters with a few tears because I think it will give me an option of perhaps attracting some better quality fish and hopefully build up and understand a response to how the fish are feeding. So I can obviously fish maggot on, the, on that line, caster, hemp or tares. So certainly in the summer like this when you're faced with a peg where you've got lots of silver fish feeding it's a great idea to target your attack with hemp and casters. I don't know if you can see or if Chappie can show with the camera how clear the water is today. It's really like tap water. And that's an advantage when you're fishing a bit further out like this, because I'd be worried about perhaps spooking the fish if I got them feeding in this clearer water. I've just hooked a, a much better fish, so I've got a feeling this might be a barbel. So it just goes to show, you never know when you're fishing like this on float tackle on a river. It's going to be a bit hairy to land because I'm not fishing very heavy at all to start with. Anyway, we'll give it our best shot. Oh no, come on. Never mind. Perhaps I'll set another rig up with a heavier hook length and we'll try that as well. But that's a good sign to catch a or hook a barbel like that. Made mince meat of my O10 hook length anyway. The other advantage of using this setup is I'm using a, a longer rod. This is a CR10 16 foot number one and a, a heavier float. So it means I can really control the float and slow it down, which will hopefully help me if I am targeting a bigger fish like a barbel. The lighter two gram float was definitely better for the, the roach and the dace because obviously I'm getting much better presentation and more sensitivity, but let's give this heavier rig a go, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes and uh, we can keep trying it throughout the session. You might notice that when I'm feeding, I'm not feeding in front of me, I'm feeding slightly downstream. And that's pretty much how I feed all the time when I'm float fishing on rivers. So I'm feeding two or three metres downstream, which just helps me. It helps me in a couple of ways. One, because I can present the bait straight away. So I can cast my bait right onto where I'm loose feeding. And secondly, because immediately the line is behind the float and I'm in control. If I was to cast straight in front of me, it's very, very difficult to control the float straight away. And it's a key factor, particularly on the Trent. It's often a really windy venue. I mean, today is quite exceptional with how still it is. So if there was a, a strong downstream wind, I'd actually lose feed even further downstream to sort of really assist in helping to control the float by getting the line right behind it. So you just need to adjust your feed and where you're casting in relation to your peg, depending on the conditions that you're faced with. So I'll just um, rebate and I'll show you how I like to cast 
when I'm fishing with a bother. And uh, I mentioned that it's a, a positive method at the beginning. And the fact that you're fishing with a, a bulk, and I nearly always fish with a bulk and then another, just one positive dropper below, which is normally made up of five or six number eights. But basically, just by holding the line below that second bulk or dropper and above my hook length, I can kind of flick my float out in a very positive way. Let the bulk take the float out and then very positively mend the line so that it just kicks the dropper out past the bulk and helps reduce tangles. I mean, it is fair to say that you will get the odd tangle when you're fishing with a bolo. And uh, I've had one today already, much to the amusement of Chappie. And uh, I suppose it's inevitable really, but keep the rig simple and cast in a sort of deliberate, positive way. And I guess one final tip is make sure that you're using a float that's heavy enough to cope with the distance that you're fishing and also how deep the peg is. So apart from feeding that main line, which is, I don't know if you can see, but there's, there's steady slack water on the inside and there's some boils and then there's some nice smooth water. And it's that smooth water just past the boils that I'm targeting as my main line. But as pretty much always when I'm river fishing, I'm feeding some bait on the inside. And I've decided to feed maggots, not very often, but quite heavily. And that just gives me another another line, a, a kind of another option, um, maybe to try and target a bigger fish like a big perch, um, who knows, even a bream or a barbel, but just gives us another option and I'm maximizing the swim. Anyway, I didn't manage to hook another barbel, so I'm gonna swap the heavier rig and I'm gonna go back to the lighter rig, try and pick off a few more silver fish and probably hook another barbel. Chappie had just commented on something that I hadn't actually realized I was doing, but I think it's a, a really good tip. And that's when I'm float fishing on a river and when I'm trotting with a stick float or a, a bolo like this, I don't strike to the side along the water. I like to, when I'm controlling the float, strike up like that. So what I'm effectively doing is I'm lifting up and I'm striking cleanly through the float. If you strike close to the water like that, you'll get, well, you'll make a big disturbance with the float splashing, but also I think you run the risk of bumping the fish. So I'll try and demonstrate that, but I think it's a good point, one that I hadn't realised I was actually doing. So obviously I'm controlling the float and that's where these 15 and 16 foot rods really come in. They're so useful when you're trying to control the float out into the river. And I've lifted the float, striking and lifting the float up rather than to the side. Well, I just had a quick look on my perch line and <laughs> I've caught one but it's not the bonus fish I was looking for but nevertheless it's all weight and who knows we might catch a decent perch down there at some point today. Just resting my main line again, and I'm just picking up a few more perch on the inside, and I think that's going to be such a valuable line on the national.
Well, it's not proving to be easy, but I'm building up a nice weight of these days, odd roach and those small perch. I suppose that's been a better a stamp of days today, about three ounces. I've had them up to about six ounces and plenty around about the ounce mark. So obviously it's very bright. We're fishing in the middle of the day and it's often the hardest time. But uh, I'm just pleased that we're still getting bites and putting fish in the net. I've just uh, rested my main line again after having a good flurry of days and on the inside line I've, I think I've hooked a decent perch so I haven't actually seen it yet but I'm only fishing the same gear which is 010 and a size 20 carbon match but I'm having a good go. Let's see if we can see it. Here he comes. He's not giving up. Here you come. Billy Perch. <laughs> nice one. You see that 20 hook just lodged in his jaw, look, that was never going to come out. <laughs> look at him. What a beautiful fish. I think best hook bait today is single caster. And you'll see, I've buried the size 20 carbon match hook inside the caster. And a good tip is bury it from the pointy end rather than the head end. And uh, the main reason for that is the flat sort of head end is quite tough. Whereas the pointier end is softer. And I've always thought that when you strike the hook will come through that end better than the harder end of the other side of the caster, if that makes sense. Here you can see the great advantage of doing that is you're completely hiding the hook. On a bright day like this when you're fishing in clear water, I think that's a big advantage. So the hemp and caster that I'm feeding, you can see that's absolutely beautiful hemp. I buy it in bulk and cook it fresh the night before I fish. And uh, it's a lovely good size, it's consistent. And what I like to do is keep my castors separate and add those to the hemp as I'm going along. So I'm just going to add another good handful of castors in there. And I suppose that's, that's kind of 50-50 mix of hemp and castors. And I can adjust that depending on how the fish are responding. Today, I think everything that I'm feeding out there is getting eaten by something. So I'm actually increasing the percentage of castors. On a hard day, I might be feeding, you know, 90% hemp. So that's an important thing to think about when you think about how you're, you're feeding. And quantity-wise, again, because I think there's a lot of fish out there, I'm feeding a good amount every cast, perhaps two or three times, a decent amount like that. Obviously, if, if I felt the bites were tailing off, then I'd reduce the feed. But today, there's so many small fish out there feeding those days are absolutely starving and I don't think any baits really get into the bottom. Okay, let's explain a bit about the type of bolo floats that I'm using today and what I use most often. So, goes without saying perhaps, but bolo floats are fish top and bottom, like a stick float. So you've got a rubber on the top and I like to have two rubbers on the stem. And 
I carry them in a variety of different sizes to cater for different situations, so different depths and how far out you want to cast. But today, the best float I've used has been this two gram Steve Mayer finesse. And I really like these on days when perhaps the water's not too pacey um, and the wind's not too bad because they offer absolutely fantastic uh, presentation. You can really lean into that small shoulder to help control the float and it doesn't cause much resistance when you strike and the float comes out the water. So that's a great float on days like this when it's calm and not too pacey. Moving up in shape, I guess this is more of a classic sort of Avon shape. So it's a little bit more bulbous. And I do like to fish those when I'm fishing in faster water and deeper water. And I use that on my heavier rig today, a four gram version. And then finally, this float sort of emphasises um, a bolo with a much bigger shoulder. And that's really useful when you've really got to get behind the float and control it and slow it down. That big shoulder there really helps you achieve that. And um, I'd use that on days when I'm fishing when the wind's really bad because I can really hang on to the float or when I'm fishing on much pacier rivers. One thing you'll notice about the floats is they've all got carbon stems. And I really do prefer using carbon stems on a bolo because it just helps with the casting. You don't get that situation where the, the bulk and the float can kind of cartwheel through the air. With a nice carbon stem like that, it always follows the bulk. So yeah, there you go. That's just a selection of some of the bolos I like, like to keep rigged up and some stick floats as well, just to help save time when I'm match fishing. So the two rods I've used today is the 16 foot and 15 foot CR10 number ones. And I love these rods when I'm fishing the bolo on rivers like the Trent. That extra length really helps with presentation and control of your float. And because these rods are so light and well balanced, they're just a dream to fish with. I've matched them up with two 4,000 reels. It's a CS10 and a CS8. And one thing to mention about the rods is you'll notice that we have these different action classifications. So one, two or three. And just to mention that number one is the softest, two is medium and three is heavy. So we offer rods in the range that should suit your style of river fishing and tactics absolutely perfectly. Well, it is unbelievable weather today. It's 30 degrees apparently. And um, this is a good tip that I've, I've used for years. And basically um, I like to freeze my drinks, keep them in my cool bag and just get the most beautiful refreshing drink on a day like this. I can't wait for this. Well, the sun's really got to me. It's been an absolute scorcher, but I've got eight or nine pound of dace and roach, a few small perch, and with that bonus perch, perhaps looking around about £10 altogether. I think it just displays what a great method the bolo can be, especially when you combine it with a long rod to help improve presentation, particularly on a hard day like this when it's really bright and the conditions are clear. Thanks for watching. Mm.